it was about four years ago that I was like, I really want to write a book. I'm going to write a book and I'm just going to keep it to myself. Nobody has to know what I'm doing. It's okay. <laughs> It'll be a secret. And I kept it a secret with the exception of my husband because he wanted to know what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing on my time? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wrote the novel and it stayed on my computer for over a year completed and I told not a soul. And one day I was talking to a really good friend who is so motivational and inspiring. And I just got this urge to share it with her that, hey, I like to write. And I wrote this book and she was everything I needed because she pushed me forward and was like, you have to do something with this. And the rest is kind of history. Ashlyn Cubison and her husband are the owners of Cubison Enterprises, Inc. She's an author, entrepreneur, real estate broker, and constant dreamer. Her mission to uplift, inspire, and help other women entrepreneurs to be daring and share their talents with the world. Time to find out more about Ashlyn Cubison on the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show with Sandy Viterra. Thank you so much. Let me welcome you now officially to our podcast, Entrepreneurial Vibrations. And here we have Ashley Cobison. She is a real estate broker, as well as an author. She has a book that is about to be released on September 29th. And that is one of the reasons why we're here. She's going to be talking to us how she was able to actually get rid of some of her limiting beliefs and become an entrepreneur. So welcome, Ashley. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your entrepreneurial journey? Hi, Sandy. First, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. I've been following you for a while on social media, and I'm so excited to be here. So a little about me is I live in San Diego with my husband and two children. We own multiple businesses. I am a real estate broker. I got my license when I was 27 years old, and I also am going to be a published author with my novel, Chasing Beverly, coming out in September. Yay! I know! <laughs> That's a big achievement. I mean, you say it like so, like, oh, my, my book, like, it's nothing. I mean, it takes a long time, first of all, to make the decision, second of all, to write it, and then to publish it, right? Yes. But before we really get into the details of the book, Chasing Beverly, Let's just back up a little bit and talk about, first of all, Ashley. Tell us about you and, you know, what was Ashley like growing up? Um, growing up, it depends growing on up. who you ask. Yeah. You know, if you ask my mom, I probably was a little <laughs> bit of a handful. But um, I was into sports. I was an athlete. That was my main passion, my main drive. I had a lot of limiting beliefs when it came to academics. And I didn't feel that I was smart enough in a lot of ways. And I kind of didn't try, if I'm being totally honest. In school, I was like, hey, I'm good at math, so I'm going to focus on that and not really, you know, English or things that I'm not good at. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of me, just sports and uh, didn't care as much about school. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, a lot of us kind of like are that way growing up, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then what happened? Like then college and what happened then? So I started to go to college and at the time I was working as an assistant for a broker okay. and I got into real estate and I was just like, oh my gosh, I really enjoy this and I want to pursue it. And then in like 07, when the crash happened, uh, my boyfriend, my husband, it's my boyfriend at the time, we, um, I had to figure something else out, obviously, because the real estate industry was just going downhill. And I was fortunate enough to get a corporate job at First American Title. But it was a really depressing time because I was helping clear title for foreclosures. And getting into title, though, is when I realized like I never wanted to do anything but real estate. And that's what I always thought I was going to only do. And that was kind of the path that my career took. Now, did you feel that as a passion within your heart? It was something that you felt like, oh my God, this is what I feel like I'm going to do the rest of my life? I think it came more from that I was good at it and it really gave me that confidence I needed at the time. I felt like 
when I was learning it and I was in training, I was like, oh my gosh, this clicks. I get it. I understand it. And I was getting a few promotions and I was super young at the time. So right. it was just exactly what my self-esteem needed. Got it. Got it. So then, then what happened? Um, I've done that since that time and I still am a real estate broker and I still am active, but it was about four years ago that I was like, I really want to write a book. I'm going to write a book and I'm just going to keep it to myself. Nobody has to know what I'm doing. It's okay. <laughs> It'll be a secret. And I kept it a secret with the exception of my husband because he wanted to know what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing at my time? <laughs> So, um, yeah, I wrote the novel and it stayed on my computer for over a year completed. And I told not a soul. And one day I was talking to a really good friend who is so motivational and inspiring. And I just got this urge to share it with her that, Hey, I like to write. And I wrote this book and she was everything I needed because she pushed me forward and was like, you have to do something with this. And the rest is kind of history. What were you feeling? What were you thinking when you were writing all this? I just was doing it for myself. I think I was doing it for, um, you know, the little girl that I was. And I was starting to do a lot of um, self-development. And I was reading other nonfiction books that were really helping and propelling me forward. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to prove it to myself that I could do it. Even if it wasn't good is what I was telling myself because I was still doubting myself. I'm like, even if this sucks, it's okay because I'm writing it and that's what matters. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to write it? Gosh, um, like two years. And then once I got into, once I got picked up by my publisher, it took another solid year of edits. So, you know, there was things that I needed to change, um, in the book and kind of move around because obviously I wasn't trained as being a writer, but they saw something in me. So that's kind of, it took, I guess, three years if you add up all the time. Right, right. And what were those fears and limiting beliefs that you were feeling? Because all along, I mean, you were still having your day-to-day -day life. Nothing was changing really. Like you were still being a wife and having your daytime job but you were doing this side thing, right? Mm -hmm. You were writing. So what were those fears that were going through your mind as you were still writing? I just, I was terrified of anybody to read it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really wanted to hide it. I was like, you know, this is just, I would just keep telling myself, I'm just doing this for fun and it's okay. And nobody needs to see it. And then at the same time, I would look up like a writer's podcast and then I would learn a new technique and then I would go back to the same manuscript and edit it and implement those things. And so I was really in a battle with myself because I loved what I was doing and it gave me a fulfillment that nothing else has ever given me. At the same time, I was terrified for anybody to see it because I'm like, what if it's terrible? I don't want somebody else to tell me again that I'm not smart enough. And that's kind of the battle I was having within myself. But at the same time, you were your own cheerleader because you were not sharing this with anyone. So you were going back and forth with your own feelings. You had the good angel and the bad angel. And you were like, oh, no, no, don't do this. But yeah, 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 keep going, right? <laughs> exactly, right? yeah. I've never thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so then what changed? Um, I don't know exactly. Like, I wish I could pinpoint it. I really think a lot of it did have to do with my self-development because I was trying to inspire other people at the time. I love to support other women, men, anybody who's an entrepreneur, entrepreneur really, but mostly women. And so I was sitting here talking to some of my other friends and telling them, you know, you need to stop having self-doubt. You're, you're good enough. You're amazing. I'm telling these women these things but I'm not executing it on my end. I have this dark secret almost. And so I think it was just my time. It was my time to finally open up and to share this with people. And once it started, I just, I couldn't stop. I started telling people that I felt like I was dumb as a kid, all these things that mm -hmm. I haven't shared before. And yeah, I think that's how it all fell into place. So it's almost like your aha moment was like, I have to start giving to myself what I'm giving to others. Basically. Absolutely. Now we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. 
Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.